Austrian Burgenlanders started immigrating to Pennsylvania's Lehigh Valley in the 1890s and grew to become one of the largest enclave of German-speaking Burgenlanders anywhere in the United States. America Calls is their story. Burgenlanders' surnames are spread throughout the Lehigh Valley in communities such as Allentown, Northampton, and Copley, where the cement, steel, railroad, and meatpacking industries could provide them work as unskilled laborers. Cheap labor was in great demand, and Bergenland immigrants would work hard for low pay as they strive for a better life in America. The Austrian Bergenlander culture has had a significant influence in the Lehigh Valley. Via the social clubs and churches they founded, the industries they supported, and the multi-generational families they created that still live in the valley. In 2010, it was estimated that about 14,000 residents of the Lehigh Valley identify Austria as their immigration homeland, and at least 70% came from Austria's Burgenland region. Thus, it's estimated that 10,000 people in the valley are immigrants from Burgenland or their direct descendants. It is sad that this culture is quickly being lost to time as native-born Burgenlanders pass on and American-born generations lose connections and interest in their Austrian roots. Austria's loss has truly become America's gain. So the purpose of this video, America Calls, is to tell the story of the Lehigh Valley Burgenlanders who lived in the 1st, 6th, 9th, and 10th wards of Allentown. Our story takes place in the late 19th century to just after World War II when Bergenland immigration to the Lehigh Valley was at its peak. Now see and hear what it was like to immigrate, live, work, and play as a first-generation Austrian immigrant through the remembrances and oral narratives of the France family and their friends. My name is Teresa France Reamer. I was born in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and I think it was called Brush Street, uh, February 9th, 1931. My name is Helen France Marin. I was born in Königsdorf, Austria, on May the 20th, 1933. But Helen, she was just a baby when we yeah, came back. Yeah, I was back. only six months old when we came over. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember a thing. I remember being on the boat. That I remembered for a long time, and I was so sick, seasick. Mom was so sick, Mom too. Mom was so sick, too, and so was I. We I were in storage. That. We weren't in private rooms or anything. But And we brought a young man back with us, Trinkle. I've forgotten his first name, Al. I think Al his name Rudy. was Al. Yeah, I think it was Al we bought. Rudy was born here, but Al was born over there. His parents were here, and so they asked if we would bring them back while we were coming. When they came earlier, the people, they wanted to get settled first, and if they had children in Austria, they would send for them when they were settled. The France immigration from Burgenland that Helen and Terry described was part of a larger historical event in Austria called the Die Auswanderung. The German phrase translates to the immigration in English, but its meaning transcends the English and really refers to the lost generation of youth that sought to seek their fortunes in America. You see, immigration fever had taken over. Many villages lost half their population, and some lost almost all their young men. Even today, many villages have populations smaller than they were before the start of the Die Auswanderung. It's estimated that in the peak immigration years between 1880 and 1924, 40,000 people left the Bergenland region and traveled via steamship to the U.S. Many businesses catered to the Die Auswanderung masses with special travel packages. The largest company, Norddeutscher Lloyd, operated ships between Bremerhaven and U.S. East Coast cities. The packages include train travel that was scheduled to get the passengers to Bremerhaven a couple of days before the ship's departure. The 750-mile steam trip ride would have taken several days 
and been especially exhausting if traveling with young children like the Francis. A hotel room, food, even souvenir photos were included in the price of the ticket. Here's an example of a 1935 souvenir photo that passengers received in the form of a postcard. The postcard not only let family know the traveler had gotten to Bremerhaven safely, but the shipping company also benefited with a travel advertisement showing smiling immigrants having a fun experience that would be sent back to prospective customers. In the 1880s, steamships revolutionized transatlantic travel, making it fast and relatively cheap at an average cost of only $14 to $25 for steerage which is about $600 in today's money. A ship carrying thousands of immigrants was a lucrative money source. So the steamship companies even opened booking offices in many villages. Travel in steerage was crowded and anything but private. Everyone slept, ate, and entertained themselves in tight quarters with many other ethnic Germans from all over Central Europe. Seasickness was common since there were limited opportunities to leave steerage for the open air deck. Luckily, the trip only took five to six days, and every immigrant's first sighting of the Statue of Liberty was a moment they remembered for the rest of their lives. For the Franz family, their immigration story starts with Carl Franz Sr. taking a travel package from Bergenland to the U.S. Carl left like so many others did because there was economic hardship in Bergenland due to long periods of drought and a swine flu epidemic that had decimated the pork industry. Additionally, the grapevine louse was destroying vineyards, which made finding work and farming difficult. Carl immigrated to Allentown sometime before 1900. He most likely came to join others from his village of Konigsdorf because of the many other Bergenlanders who were already here. The Lehigh Valley had become a popular destination for Bergenlanders, and letters sent home told of good jobs and friendly German enclaves, which encouraged others to follow. Many of the men came first to do seasonal work, and then sent for their wives or fiancés if they found good jobs. With Carl Sr., all we know is that he found a good job, and he and his wife, Julia Decker, came and they had a son named Carl Jr. who was born in Allentown in 1903. The family then decided to return to Konigsdorf because they were either homesick or had earned enough money to return and buy a farm which could have been their plan all along. Many Bergenlanders initially only came to make money and always planned to return. About 25 percent of the Bergenlanders who came to America returned home with the money they had saved. Our guess is Carl Sr. returned sometime around 1907, as there was a great recession in the U.S. then that made finding work difficult for unskilled laborers like Carl Sr. The family traveled back to their farm in Konigsdorf, Bergenland, and used the money saved from America to fix up and improve the farm. Carl Jr. grew into a young man who found a young Fraulein named Teresa Ressler in the neighboring village that he took a fancy to. Pop lived in Königsdorf, and Mom lived in Erdendorf, and then they got together at a dance, I think she said. And when they went to a dance in, in Erdendorf, uh, the girls were on one side and the men on the other, and they had asked if girls couldn't go in unless one of the men asked them in. They went to school in sixth grade, the parents, yeah. my parents, uh, and my oh, in Europe. Yes. And they uh, learned German, but in the village that they spoke, more like a farmer German, we used to say. It's not proper high German. Hintzisch. Hintzisch, they, they would say. The slang. Yeah. The Frotz family immigration story starts again with American board Carl Jr. and his wife Teresa deciding in 1928 to come to Allentown as his father had done 30 years earlier. Carl Jr. was lucky that he was an American citizen having been born in Allentown in 1903, so he was not subject to the immigration quota system of 1924 that had drastically reduced Bergenland immigration to the U.S. 
By 1925, immigration to the United States was difficult, unless you were sponsored by an American citizen already living here. Many a naturalized family member sponsored a brother or sister to come to the U.S. during this time. Carl Jr. and Teresa found jobs, worked hard, and saved for a better future. Their first child, Teresa, or Terry, was born in 1931. And perhaps homesickness had set in, or they had saved enough to expand the family farm back home, as they decided to return to Austria in 1933. They didn't stay long, as the call of America now was too strong, or family disagreements about running the farm and seeing the hardships of rural life again made Carl Jr. decide to leave Burgenland for good and immigrate back to Allentown within three months of their second child Helen's birth in May of 1933. Carl and his wife Teresa and their two children, Terry and Helen, arrived in Allentown on November 1933 and never looked back. They were Americans now and they had become part of the Austrian community that had a huge influence on Lehigh Valley culture and industries. Bergenland and the Lehigh Valley were now changed forever by the Die Auswanderung, or immigration fever, that had stole a generation of youth from Austria. <laughs>